How is Pakistan dealing with the security threat emanating from Afghanistan? Islamabad has reported an increase in cross-border attacks by the Pakistani Taliban. What's behind this surge? And is the Taliban government doing enough to stop it? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mohammed Jamjoum. Pakistan's provinces along the Afghan border have been under relentless attack by the armed group Tahrik-e-Taliban Pakistan. It's also known as TTP or the Pakistani Taliban. Islamabad accuses the Taliban government in Afghanistan of allowing these fighters to use its territory to launch attacks. The Afghans deny this. We'll go to our panel in just a few moments, but first, Fintan Monahan has this report. An attack on a political rally in northwest Pakistan in July. It's just one of more than 300 raids this past year blamed on the TTP, Tariq e Taliban Pakistan, the armed group also known as the Pakistani Taliban. The government has found it increasingly difficult to maintain security. It accused the Taliban government in neighboring Afghanistan of providing fighters with a safe haven. Pakistan has uh, unfortunately seen in recent months a spike in violence uh, and uh, terrorist attacks. Most of these attacks are being uh, uh, perpetrated by uh, TTP, which uh, has sanctuaries across the border in uh, Afghanistan. The Pakistani Taliban's ideology aligns closely with its Afghan counterpart. It wants stricter enforcement of Islamic law and the withdrawal of the military from some border provinces. But the Taliban government denies supporting or harboring the group. TTP has no hideouts inside Afghanistan, but despite that, Pakistan accuses Afghan soil of being used by the Tariq Taliban. Pakistan's enemies are within their own country, for which we are not responsible. We do not allow them to operate from our soil. Pakistan's security forces have been stepping up operations against the armed group. As well as police raids, the military conducted strikes across the border in 2022. There's also been some diplomatic success. The Afghan Taliban recently arrested 200 fighters within its own jurisdiction. But with elections in Pakistan set for next year, pressure is growing to get the security situation under control. Vincent Monaghan for Inside Story. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our guests. In Islamabad is Wakar Khan, a defense analyst and retired brigadier in the Pakistan Army. In New York is Obaidullah Bahir, adjunct lecturer at the American University of Afghanistan. And in London is Zishan Salahuddin, director of the Center for Regional and Global Connectivity at Tabad Lab, a geopolitical think tank and advisory service. Uh, a warm welcome to you all, and thanks so much for joining us today on Inside Story. Well, Kar, let me start with you today. Uh, there have been hundreds of raids this past year that Pakistan has blamed on the tahrik e taliban Pakistan, or TTP. What's behind this surge in attacks? I think it's a very complicated situation, especially after the American pullout uh, in the last two years. And uh, uh, Pakistan Afghanistan metrics is... Uh, uh, actually not really new, it's, it's, I would say, decades old. And Pakistan border has always been uh, a problem area. Because of two major interventions, I'll not go into history, it was the Soviet Union and then the uh, U.S. So definitely there have been four regime changes uh, since last, I think, 40 or 50 years. So definitely there's going to be instability. Now, the current spate of violence is because of uh, TTP's ideology and probably a confidence that in case TTA could uh, push out the Americans, uh, probably TTP could also do it in the uh, bordering uh, region of Pakistan. And I think there is some, some support coming from Afghanistan as well. Now, it's more than, I think, Pakistan-Afghanistan problem. It's now becoming an international problem. If you uh, listen to the uh, Moscow format held yesterday, I think there were the immediate periphery, and then people, uh, countries even outside the immediate periphery have all raised concern and asked the Afghan Taliban to dismantle militant uh, hideouts and militant groups. So I think it's now becoming an international problem. Uh, but definitely, in case uh, the TTP, who has actually the leaders have oath of allegiance to uh, Mullah Habatullah, who is the supreme leader of Afghanistan, uh, I think in case uh, the Afghan Taliban put their foot down, there can be uh, a major change as far as terrorist attacks in Pakistan are concerned. And I think 
terror is being used uh, as a leverage to draw certain concessions from Pakistan and also to create space uh, for Tehrik Taliban Pakistan uh, for their, you know, uh, for their strategic interests. Well, Kar, I also just want to make sure uh, we're clear on one thing. Uh, when you mentioned in your answer TTA, were you talking about the Taliban in Afghanistan? Yeah, exactly. TTA means the interim government in Afghanistan. I see. Uh, uh, Waqar, Taliban in Afghanistan. Yeah. Waqar, may I also ask you, um, Pakistan says the country's intelligence and security officials have concluded that most of these attacks are being carried out by TTP, Pakistani Taliban. Uh, has Pakistan shared that intel or evidence with Afghanistan? I think number of times, especially if you look at 2023, uh, I think thrice there has been a formal engagement between, let's say, our special representative, Mr. Ambassador uh, Asif Durrani, along with, I think, the highest uh, uh, ranking uh, intelligence officers and military officers. And uh, I think it was uh, covered in a lot of detail uh, shared with Kabul, with pictures of uh, some of the uh, TTP leaders, even, you know, uh, dining or staying or being sponsored. Uh, by some of the factions within the TTA. Uh, the other is definitely, uh, uh, I think, first time this year, Pakistan has formally now started speaking about it publicly. Like you must have heard about our uh, uh, interim uh, foreign minister, interim prime minister, even speaking from uh, United Nations General Assembly Forum mm. that this has to stop. And if you look at what has happened to Pakistan, I think, in terms of hosting of uh, 3 million uh, foreign refugees, they are brothers and sisters. And now you have uh, almost 1 million illegal refugees. So mm. that's also creating a very difficult situation. So I would say the evidence has been shared. And I think nowadays, very easy to uh, do mm. it through intelligence, through human intelligence and surveillance. Uh, I think evidence, uh, clear evidence has been shared. It's entirely up to TTA to now acknowledge it and stop it. Uh, Obedullah, let, let me turn to you next. Uh, as you've heard the last few moments, um, uh, you know, Pakistan has been accusing the Taliban government in Afghanistan of providing TTP fighters with a safe haven. What does Afghanistan say to that charge? Um, first off, thank you for having me on. Um, it's always a pleasure being here. But also, this accusation is as old as time itself. I mean, there's always been an element that the Pakistani authorities are worried about, are concerned about. It was the BLA before this. It was different elements before that. If you look at the other side, the Afghans would actually say that Pakistan was doing the same thing, has been doing the same things through consecutive regimes in Afghanistan, and then claiming that the border itself cannot be controlled. There are a few things we have to be very mindful of. There's a question of implied or origin of the Taliban, which does not originate in Afghanistan. So we have to be very clear of that. Then there is a question of the base of operations. Their base of operations is not inside Afghanistan. We have to be very clear about that as well. But then if there is a worry about cooperation from the Taliban in Afghanistan with the TTP in Pakistan, you have to understand that the Taliban have done more than any regime before this. They have already declared if there is a specific loyalty of TDP fighters to the leader of the Taliban, they have announced a decree that people are not supposed to go in a religious jihad outside Afghanistan. So they have very clearly signaled to their own mm. fighters. The arrests that have happened are another indicator of how much cooperation is being done. You have to see that the Moscow summit, the Moscow meetings that were mentioned earlier, mm. um, they Praise the Taliban for their efforts for containing uh, threats to the region and the globe. So it turns out all the neighbors are happy. Um, the United States is happy. We saw them in the Doha meeting with the Taliban praising them for their efforts in counterinsurgency and counterterrorism. However, Pakistan seems to be the only unhappy neighbor. What I'm saying is there are problems, and these problems can only be solved once we get out of a prisoner's dilemma. A prisoner's dilemma can only be broken once we start cooperating, and cooperation doesn't happen through grand gesturing on media, accusing the Taliban, um, basically outsourcing a problem mm. that is yours to another country like they are responsible for it. Obedullah, if this continues, are you concerned that this could turn into a conflict between Afghanistan and Pakistan? 
Uh, the short answer is no, but we've had skirmishes on the borders. We have to understand that there are national sentiments involved, that there are people within Afghanistan who do think that the Pakistani authorities or the Pakistani regime hasn't played a positive role, hasn't helped secure the border, helped enforce the Taliban and bring them to power as they are today. Um, so the current deterioration in relationship partially is because of the Pakistani policy towards Afghanistan, not giving it enough agency, not respecting its sovereignty. On the other end, I think the Taliban might be overcorrecting as well, because they've been accused of being Pakistan's proxies for so long that they have to show that they can be hard on Pakistan. However, like I said before, the deterioration of ties doesn't help anyone. It actually hurts both the regimes on, on across the border and the people. The people end up suffering the most. So mm. uh, the only thing that makes sense is try to de-escalate and find a way forward. However, recognizing the basics mm. of they're not originated in Afghanistan, they're not based there. But if you want cooperation, we can have that through rational diplomacy. Mm. Uh, Zishan, you heard uh, Obedullah there talking about the deterioration of the relationship. I want to get your opinion on this. From your vantage point, how, how, how much have the ties between Pakistan and Afghanistan deteriorated at this stage? I think the ties have deteriorated tremendously over the last two years, especially. There was a range of mechanisms and both formal and informal instruments that Pakistan could bring to bear uh, on Afghanistan, both the Ghani regimes and both the Karzai regimes, to try and negotiate its way out of whatever it was that was a point of concern at that particular point in time. But those things, it seems, no longer have the kind of effect that we either wanted to or had hoped uh, would be an effect on the Afghan Taliban. In fact, I would argue that uh, specifically in three areas, so for example, cross-border trade and transnational trade, uh, the refugee crisis that exists in Pakistan and has been there since 1979, as well as the visa regime, that being medical visas and education visas being denied at uh, border crossings for Afghan citizens entering into Pakistan. Uh, these are some pressure tactics that Pakistan historically used uh, to bring to bear a certain amount of uh, uh, you know, uh, force on Afghanistan, but that so far does not necessarily mm. seem to have worked with Afghanistan. And I think it's a little more nuanced than just you know one side being right or the other side being right. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, despite uh, Afghanistan saying that the TP does not operate out of Afghanistan, the UN reports from the Security, uh, uh, Security Committee uh, specifically states somewhere between 3,500 and 5,500 fighters, active TTP fighters inside of the borders of Afghanistan. Th those are established facts. Th that's not a statement from one government or another. And it also must be said that it's not easy uh, for the Afghan Taliban either to mm. you know, conduct a full-blown crackdown on the TTP, considering, uh, as Vakar Khan Saab said, the ideological alignment that exists between the two and the fact that one of the first things that happened after August 15, 2021, when the Afghan Taliban took over Kabul, was that the TTP leadership uh, sw uh, swore allegiance uh, to the to the leader uh, Hebatullah Akhundzada uh, and swore to you know uh, swear by them. Uh, the last thing I will just say in response to something that Ubaidullah said, who mm -hmm. is one of the finest uh, minds to come out of Afghanistan uh, in its history, uh, is that creating a decree that disallows fighters to you know, attack targets inside of Pakistan in of itself is not going to be sufficient to stop mm. the TTP. And there's something to be said about how if a country says there are no fighters on its soil that are planning attacks against Pakistan and then also arrests 200 of them, something is a disconnect somewhere. Uh, Zishan, uh, let me also ask you, I just want to take a step back for a moment. Um, how much of a security threat does the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, pose to Pakistan and in the region? That's a great question. The bulk of the threat is actually contained to what we call the tribal belt. That is the southern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province and the northern Balochistan province, with two or three salient exceptions. Uh, on January 28th of this year, they conducted the bombing in the city of Peshawar, which killed 81 police officers, and then conducted another raid uh, at the police chief's headquarters in the city of Karachi, our largest city um, in the middle of Feb, followed by, as one of your presenters said, the attack on the political rally in July. This, uh, these three attacks very specifically 
do indicate that they have some additional level of urban ingress and strike capability that goes beyond the tribal belt and, of course, is a huge problem for the state of Pakistan. As you might know, between 2008 and 2015, the TTP was predominantly responsible for a terror campaign that spanned the length and breadth of the country, killing somewhere north of 7,500 people on a yearly basis until a very concerted kinetic operation called Operation Zarbez launched on June 15, 2014, mm. effectively dismantled the group. So the threat uh, is very much contained to a particular geographic region within Pakistan, with the occasional slippage uh, and the inability for Pakistan security apparatus to snip the, uh, the, the terrorism value chain uh, as it tries to target, mm. uh, target, uh, target urban centers. Uh, Wakar, uh, Zishan mentioned there that uh, the Afghan Taliban recently arrested 200 fighters uh, within its own jurisdiction. Um, I want to ask you if that is something that has in any way helped to try and repair the relationship between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Yeah, I think it is a very significant move by the leadership. And uh, I'm sure uh, if you look at the uh, you know statement coming from Moscow format before that, the group of seven, uh, and now Afghanistan also realized that of course, establishing rid of the state is one thing, then running, you know, government is another. And uh, if you look at the contribution, I'll just take a while. Uh, you know, Pakistan has done for uh, the current Taliban regime is uh, diplomatically, you know, initial conferences to recognize Afghanistan, including the investment conference were held in Islamabad. And there are, I think, so many other leverages, I would say, one to other trade, uh, socially, you know, helping their brothers and sisters, then people also come for, you know, uh, treatment and education and diplomacy and everything, including, you know, uh, a lot of food gain goes from here. And we, we never, you know, claim it that there's something that it's an extra favor. So these are the positives. And I'm sure if we can build upon that, so if terrorism is the only thing, uh, I, I and I think Afghanistan needs friends. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, there were two major interventions. So if somebody blames that, you know, Pakistan did create these, uh, let's say, factions, so uh, I don't think so. We are in, uh, you know, Pakistan, like Madagascar or New Zealand, not undermining these countries. But geographically, two superpowers coming, sitting in Afghanistan uh, for a considerable period of time, one for almost nine years, the other for two decades. And uh, if somebody says that it was all Pakistan doing, I think we just adjusted. Pakistan just adjusted to the situation, went with the international community and still tried to help Afghanistan. I think the blame should also go to those two superpowers who created so much of instability, mm. and it's very, very unfortunate. So, but all told, I think uh, still uh, both sides should work for peace. And in case of one senior leadership is very serious, mm. and they now understand the pressure in terms of you know women rights and human rights, uh, there are so many other things uh, to run the government. Uh, I think that can be a very good uh, uh, gesture. And mm. Pakistan has acknowledged. But I think you have seen uh, another two terrorist attacks coming on Eid Miladur Nabi, where Muslims were killed. And I don't know what kind of Islam uh, TTP is trying to propagate. Uh, well, Kar, also I want to ask you about the fact that t the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, has been intensifying attacks on Pakistani security forces. Is this essentially meant to send a message to the state that the state is not able to stop them? Yeah, I said there's a lot of, I think, uh, I would say, uh, uh, loopholes along the border. Just imagine uh, one million uh, illegal, uh, you know, Afghans uh, staying at, in Pakistan. You don't know who's doing what. So so definitely they can always sneak and uh, launch the attacks, especially in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Bajistan, and even times in urban centers. The state has been, I think, fighting throughout for the last two decades. And I think it had been many soft it would have dismantled by this time, uh, the kind of pressure Pakistan has taken. Definitely this year there was step up. And I think it is part of that uh, leverage of terrorism to draw a certain concession because TTP probably feels that in us while Fata they can get some space mm. and, you know, establish, you know, uh, let's say something of a control as they had, uh, you know, before two major operations were launched by mm. Pakistan army. Uh, but I'm sure the, the current chief is determined. He's very clearly said there's zero tolerance for uh, uh, terrorism and military is going to fight till end. So maybe they can test the resolve mm. of uh, Pakistan military. Uh, it has done it for the last two decades, so it can, I think, do it for another one year. Uh, Obedullah, are there concrete steps that can be taken at this stage to improve the situation? And, and from your vantage point, could we see any kinds of negotiations uh, or talks start again going forward? Um, 
Yes, um, I think there is a lot of scope. Uh, Zishan is always kind. He's a wonderful person himself. However, we have to correct that the UN report that he mentions uh, was debunked by U.S. agencies. Uh, U.S. security agencies debunked that report, said that the numbers were not correct, that the data that they had was different. We saw a welcoming of the improvement of work on the security front uh, by the United States State Department in Doha a few months ago in the Moscow format as well. We heard a discussion about the arrests that have happened, right, and whether it makes rational sense for the TTP not to exist. There's a difference between the Taliban being there and the very large border that is impossible to control, something that the Pakistani authorities have been saying for the past 20 years when they were accused of letting the Afghan Taliban cross the border and use Pakistan as a safe haven. There were fighters of the Balochistan Liberation Army that the Pakistanis were very concerned about. Somehow they aren't concerned about them anymore in the past two years. That shows that the Taliban have provided guarantees that there have been improvements, including the arrests that were mentioned earlier. Yes, we do blame the United States for the militancy and radicalism as well. We blame other actors as well. However, Pakistan did have a central role. And just to clarify that this TTP doesn't originate in Afghanistan, it's really important to remember. And also, you have to understand that there are security failures. We are heartbroken by the uh, attacks happening in Pakistan. We think that they should be stopped. The Pakistani authorities and the Afghan authorities, whatever they can do, the de facto authorities in Afghanistan, they have to cooperate and find a way to make it stop. However, you have to understand that internal politics sometimes demands that you do not own up your own security failures and have someone to blame it on. I think that very often happens with Afghanistan. Their own agency mm. is under what that does in the long run is it could help you look better right now, but it really deteriorates the people-to-people -people contact between mm. um, uh, sides. Uh, what we can do right now is when we have to have security cooperation, they can have joint National Security Council meetings between them, something the United States is capable of doing with the Taliban. And mm. they've been fighting with 20 years. So why is it impossible for Pakistan to do so? There can be cooperation, there can be ways of stopping elements from if there are operations that are a concern, they have to be stopped. Uh, but just this rhetoric of going at each other and blaming each other does not really help uh, relations. Zishan, uh, it looked like you might have wanted to respond to some of what Obedullah was saying. I will let you do that if, if you did want to. But I also want to ask you uh, about the fact that Pakistan security forces have been stepping up operations against the TTP, um, as well as police raids that have been conducted. The military conducted uh, strikes across the border in 2022. Might Pakistan carry out those kinds of strikes again? So the over-the-horizon strikes have been a controversial topic in Pakistan for the simple reason that the strikes that we did conduct in April of 2022 did not necessarily kill any uh, TTP fighters and instead uh, uh, potentially uh, uh, ended up harming civilians on the Afghan side. And the big reason for this is, of course, because U.S. troops and forces have pulled out of Afghanistan. We don't have access to the same level of foreign intelligence that we used to inside of Afghanistan, and it did become a bit of an embarrassment for Pakistan. Not to mention the fact that, as Vedala has also said, fighting and these kinds of over-the-horizon strikes and these extreme kinetic measures really should be uh, the last resort. You know, for 20 years, Pakistan has been speaking uh, about how the problem in Afghanistan can only be solved through negotiation. And we saw that happen on February 29, 2020, the first formal legitimization of the Afghan Taliban through the Doha agreement between the United States uh, and the Afghan Taliban. Uh, uh, that, of course, is very much serves as a, as a baseline document for how the Taliban should conduct itself as far as its international commitments are concerned, specifically mm. regarding counterterrorism. And as far as Afghanistan in of itself is concerned, uh, you know, I very much agree. It, it's very much a strategic imperative for Pakistan to see a stable, prosperous Afghanistan that has dramatically escalated its uh, trade regime uh, with Pakistan, uh, because as far as negotiations between the two sides are concerned, while the negotiation between the TDP and the GOP is extremely unlikely at this stage, considering the two sides want things that the other side simply will never agree to, uh, the negotiations between the IEA and the GOP and the continued talks are absolutely essential. We saw some positive news coming out uh, of uh, Pakistan's special envoy to Afghanistan 
uh, Ambassador Aris uh, Durrani and the acting foreign minister, Amir Mutaki, on mm -hmm. September 22nd, where they have come up with this plan to try and neutralize uh, TTP presence inside of Afghanistan. Uh, but of course, that can very much be at odds uh, with some of the more pronounced nuances that exist as far mm -hmm. as the connection between the TTP and the IEA is concerned. Uh, Zishan, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to ask you about the fact that the Pakistani government is really under a lot of pressure to improve the security situation ahead of elections next year. What can be done to improve the security situation? So the security situation uh, ahead of the elections is actually a very, very good point. Uh, elections, generally speaking, are a soft target for these groups. Uh, Obedullah mentioned earlier that Pakistan seems to be no longer concerned with the BLA. That factually is not correct. The BLA is actually a part of a much larger group of organizations called the BRAS, and they have been consistently conducting attacks in Pakistan. But since the beginning of this year, there have been close to 300, and the vast majority of them, over 90 percent, have been conducted by the TTP. So that's a principal reason why so much attention, both by the state and the security apparatus, is on that. As far as what you can do, I mean, beefing up security, especially around election rallies, uh, making sure the deployment of law enforcement agencies in key areas of concern, as well as extensive foot intelligence and IBOs, those are intelligence-based operations, uh, especially inside of Pakistan, are absolutely necessary, while simultaneously putting multilateral pressure on the Afghan Taliban to curtail the situation on their side of the border mm. on the ways forward. Uh, Obedullah, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I just want to ask you, uh, we talked earlier about the fact that there had been this arrest of uh, 200 or so TTP fighters in Afghanistan. And, and obviously that's a move that some in Pakistan have praised. Do you think that there will be more gestures of this nature going forward? There can be. Like I said, the decrees were given stopping fighters from going into Pakistan and fighting there. The arrests are happening. However, if Afghanistan's aerial sovereignty is violated, the de facto authorities have no other option but to seize cooperation. There has to be respect for the sovereignty of Afghanistan. Not doing so hurts uh, any corporation we can have. So only rational thinking coming out of this prisoner's dilemma, stop accusing each other and actually seeking each other's help and contextualizing what we are saying and what we are thinking. The Taliban have stopped BLA from operating against Pakistan. They have done arrests of TTP fighters. They are offering to help what else can be done other than actually sitting down and sharing mm. information as to where we can improve. And I, I really wish things improved because at the end of the day, the cost is paid by the common people. Uh, the Pakistani mm. businessmen don't have access to Afghanistan. Afghans don't have access to Pakistan. We're joined by the hip on, on such a large border. And basically, there is so much spillover mm. that it doesn't help one of us if things deteriorate. All right. Well, we have run out of time, so we're going to have to leave the conversation there. Thanks so much to all of our guests, Wakar Khan, Obedullah Bahir, and Zishan Salahuddin. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Mohammed Jamjoum, and the whole team here, bye for now.